Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani and welcome back to this YouTube channel on all issues related to narcissism and narcissistic relationships. This series, this is sort of a series I'm doing on narcissistic abuse rather specifically. A lot of people have said, hey, I need help healing from narcissistic abuse. That's a big mountain to climb. So what I've done is I've deconstructed this by the patterns people who are experiencing narcissistic abuse share and talk about. So I'm going to take this sort of pattern by pattern and talk about things you can do. Today, we're going to be talking about a very common pattern in narcissistic abuse, which is regret. Before I go further, as always, please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell to get notifications of our almost daily content. And here we go. Let's talk about regret. Now, if there is a universal experience that people who are experiencing narcissistic abuse or who are survivors of narcissistic abuse all share, it is the experience of regret. What are the regrets that people talk about? They'll say that I regret that this relationship ever happened. I regret that I spent so much time in it. I regret that somehow this relationship wasn't different. I saw such potential. I regret at the opportunities I lost because of being in this relationship. I regret what doing in this, what being in this relationship did to my family. I regret not getting out of this relationship sooner. Believe it or not, there's people who regret that it ended. I'll talk more about that in a moment. And actually, I'd love for any of you to share some of the regrets you've had in your narcissistic relationship. Drop them in the comments. We'd love to hear them. Now, regret is a sense of sadness or disappointment over something that has occurred, and particularly over any kind of a lost opportunity or just lost moment. You can easily see how regret and rumination are best friends. Regret gives rumination its material. A hefty chunk of what people ruminate about is, ding, regret. In an intimate or close relationship is where we see regret is often the most pronounced. It's most often because you are the person who chose this person. In many cases, people regret the day that they met this person. They regret not seeing the red flags earlier and listening to them. They may regret moving too fast, falling for the red flags early on, and falling for the hoovering down the, down the pike. Then you may get caught in the regret abyss. You're not sure whether you're willing to leave because you have fear about regretting that you left. And then you're not sure whether you should stay, but then you have potential regret about the time you may waste if you stay. Can't win. Many people I have worked with over the years have indicated that they regret that they didn't honor the red flags that they saw in the first few months. And they kick themselves for years or even a lifetime about that. Now, interestingly, some people regret leaving and take the stance of perhaps the devil you know is better than the devil you know, don't, and it's preferable. And they ruminate and wonder about whether the next person will get a better version of the narcissist. By the way, there is no better version of them. This is it. This is as good as it gets. Or they'll wonder if maybe the next person will be enough for the narcissist. And remember, nobody and nothing is ever enough for the narcissist. There may be regrets about time that you lost with children if you leave, family relationships that would be ruined if you leave the narcissistic relationship. And the regrets from leaving a narcissistic relationship can really be quite paralyzing for some people. So you can see here how regret is such a, a universal part of narcissistic abuse. Now, if you are from a narcissistic family, regret is a baseline that thrums throughout your life. When you come from a narcissistic family, let's face it, you missed out. You missed out on important social, emotional development that arises out of healthy mirroring, unconditional love and validation. You missed out on those things. You missed out on stretching your wings because you felt safe enough to do so and you felt as though you were enough rather than feeling like not enough. You missed out on the nudge of encouragement you needed to pursue your dreams. You missed out on the support you needed just to figure stuff out. 
That's a lot of stuff to regret. And there's a risk for those from narcissistic families that they can live in this morass of regret for a very long time. And then there's a greater risk of falling into a pattern on a victimhood which can hold you back. But it's understandable when opportunities had to occur that those opportunities like mirroring had to occur during a certain developmental window and they didn't happen. Regret is an almost sensible reaction to that. There's no going back. And in the workplace, a narcissistic boss or a narcissistic mentor can easily derail your career. Your ideas might get, might get stolen or ignored. You may not fluff the boss enough and then get replaced by the narcissist's sycophants and minions. Anyone who thinks they can survive and or thrive under a narcissistic boss is woefully wrong and many, many years can be wasted in a job waiting for the narcissistic boss to either advance you or perhaps you're waiting for the narcissistic boss to re be replaced. The fact is a narcissist is far more likely to outlast you in a workplace. And the regret over years wasted in a job where you have no chance of being noticed, working under conditions of chaos and undermining, can fill you with bottomless regret. So what do you do? Well, how do you deal with this part of narcissistic abuse, of regret? Regret is like a psychological cancer that can get in you and spread and not only fuel rumination, but make you prone, again, to the sense of victimhood and turn you into your own worst enemy. It is such a classical part of narcissistic abuse and it needs to be addressed systematically. So what are some things you can do? First, remember, above all else, acceptance really matters. This narcissistic abuse is a hand that was dealt to you, especially in an involuntary relationship like family. You didn't choose them. But here's the deal. And as abusive and invalidating and painful as this narcissistic relationship was and wishing it was different or regretting it happened, it burn, those, those patterns burn important emotional resources you need to be able to make a better fight for yourself. Secondly, after you get through acceptance, you need to focus on meaning and purpose. You need to find a way to integrate this difficult story and find the meaning and purpose. It can be profoundly powerful. And instead of regret, you may then find a strength in pushing back on narcissistic abuse. That goes back to the idea I keep saying over and over on these videos that surviving narcissistic abuse is a superpower. That's because it is. Regret can be spun into something bigger and better once you can extract some kind of meaning from this experience. Third, you got to recognize that some days are going to be much harder than others. Even if you've, after you've healed from narcissistic abuse, experiences, ongoing experiences in your life can be quite activating and triggering and they can once again flood you with that sense of regret. You can't control those experiences. It's okay. It will pass. Sometimes people feel that if they are hearing about people who had healthy family systems or whose marriages are working or careers are succeeding while theirs have been harmed by narcissistic abuse, you can feel that regret come up again. Please be gentle with yourself. It's okay to be with the negative feeling. It'll pass. Fourth, please be careful that you don't fall into a vortex of victimhood. It's so easy to do. You've been through a lot if you've endured narcissistic abuse. And it's very easy to go from regret to why did this happen to me? Then you, go, you start going to why does everything bad happen to me? Catch yourself before that happens. A victimized identity can hold you back and you need to be your best advocate. Yeah, something bad did happen happened to you and now is the time to learn from, from it and pay attention to red flags and not enable the narcissist and all of that stuff. But you also need to take a minute to pay attention to any of the good stuff that's happening in your life. That stuff can be an antidote to regret. Fifth therapy and I'm going to be saying this throughout the series but yeah you need a place to lay out all the regret and purge it and then slowly release it. Therapy is that place for many people. And other people may find spiritual outlets as well as daily practices such as meditation. 
Others of you may find that therapy is not accessible for you. You might find, for example, online support spaces, Facebook groups for survivors of narcissistic abuse. Those may also give you communities where you can see people do share their regret. Narcissistic relationships waste time. They waste a lot of time, years, decades, and sadly, in some cases, lifetimes. Some people may lift their head and say, you know what, I'm 70 years old. I gave up my life to this. What am I supposed to do now? And get very angry. You know what, 70 is late in the game. I'll give you that. However, that narcissistic abuse has already done so much harm. Please don't give the rest of your time to that. It is such a common pattern in narcissistic abuse. And of all the patterns, it's one that really makes sense. Pushing back on the regret in terms of survival from narcissistic abuse is a gift you can give yourself. Please find a way to get there. And again, I would love to hear from any of you some of your regrets from being in a narcissistic relationship. These comments then become another tool for all of us to get support and share your experiences so all of you can see that you're not alone. Just drop that in the comments, do it anonymously, change your, your name on YouTube if you need to so you can share some of this. But hearing some of these things really fortify my ability even to talk about these issues and certainly everyone else is going to grow from it too. So as always, thanks again. Please join this community, subscribe, look at those comments, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And as always, thank you for sharing your stories. Bye.